Good morning, guys. Good morning. We are once again, we're live now. Uh, we just, uh, this is the Passive to Prosperous uh, podcast. Thanks so much for coming on. I want to welcome you here. I got my co-host Logan Hassinger on the on the line here with us. We generally morning, guys. We've been good morning, sir. Now we got him up early. He's got his coffee. He's got the squirrel wheel running, getting the computer going. Um, and they say you you know you plan, God laughs, you adapt and overcome. But um, usually we don't do this show live, but we're gonna start doing some of them live. Uh, we're just ramping up the episodes of our podcast called Passive to Prosperous. Just like our book, and uh, Logan and I have been have been together for a few years now. Um, both both as a as I, I was coaching him as a mentor, a friend, and somebody who's just really you know blasting off in his life and his business. And I think this is a great show. Um, this is a great show to talk about. I'm sorry, I'm getting pinged over here. This is a great show to talk about right now. Going on, what are you doing for the end of the year? What are you doing for goal setting? And uh, Logan and I always hit each other up like, hey, what should we talk about? And this is something so prevalent right now with so many things going on. So good morning, Logan. Thanks for being on, brother. Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a little bit since we, um, you know, on the campaign trail with you and um, all the stuff going on down here. So um, glad to be back on. And, you know, I think, I think these, these episodes are always um, motivating for, for ourselves as well, I think. Um, keeps us on track and holds us accountable. They sure are. So. You know what's so cool about these episodes is every time I personally do this, and I, I, we'll talk a little about what you do, but I personally take, and we'll talk more about it, but I personally take that week from Christmas to New Year's to really talk about, you know, because everyone's talking about goal setting and all of that. And and, and right now, um, in fourth quarter, I always plan for end of year. What am I going to do for end of year? And we'll talk some of, the, some of that. But goal setting is so important to do every single year. And I'll show you a little bit about what I do. Um, but it's always, I, I know that I, you know, I have ideas and I start thinking like from, from the day after Christmas for New Year's is really where I, I focus and I take time and I kind of put everything else aside. And I kind of like, what, you know, even if I go away with my family, I kind of sitting on the beach and I'm always thinking about, okay, what is my plan for 2021? What's my plan for the next year? Yeah. And um, it's so important, but I always look back while I'm doing it. I'm like, wow, I always look back at where I was last year, mm-hmm. where I was three years from now, where I was five years from now. And I actually write my goals down. I actually have a black marble notebook, like I'm back in school. <laughs> and every year I write my goals down and then I have subtitles and the goals and stuff like that. So have you looked back? Have you even thought about, I mean, because for me, it's a little different looking at myself. But when I look at somebody like I mentored and I look back yeah. where you were three years ago, um, I think I met you probably even four or five years ago now, but where, yeah, where you were three right years there. ago, yep. where you were and where you were last year. And then we had a little talk before we even hit, hit, hit uh, live and where you are today. Mm-hmm. It's where you were a couple months ago, even when we started this. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's freaking amazing, right? We we had this and I said, stop talking, <laughs> stop talking. We got to go live because I want to get this on there. And I'm like, dude, everything's showing you all, all the... Uh, all the writing is on the wall for what you should be doing. Exactly. I'm not going to say what you should be doing, right? But yeah, all no. the writing's on the wall because you're freaking crushing it, bro. I give you all the credit in the world, man. Like, it's, you buy that. Like, yeah, I've mentored you and I've, we've been friends and we talk all the time. But, like, you know, we had a nice call the other day on my way back from North Carolina. We guys spoke, like, you know, <laughs> they called me. It was like 10 30, 11 at night. And like, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. I didn't realize so late. Like, dude, I'm on the road for another couple of hours. This I was is just like, trying to keep you awake. This is like a wanted <laughs> call, man. I enjoyed it. So, have you thought about it? Like, like, like do you ever think back to like where I was? A- absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I always go back to where, you know, where my story started and um, just trying to figure things out and just taking some action. Um, from a very simple approach of, Hey, how do we go pick up a rental property and, you know, putting things in place and, and moving down the line. And, um, actually spoke at a, uh, at a youth group event, um, over the weekend. And, um, again, talking about goal setting, talking about, you know, it's a journey, um, and all the same stuff that, you know, that we, t- we talk about here. And, um, I, I look back when, when I was even, you know, these are 18 to 23, 18 to 24. And so, um, I think a lot of what I was saying is probably going over their head, um, but I just, you know, I wish I had somebody in my ear at that age uh, telling me something. So I think it clicked for a couple of them. But when when you think about goal setting, you know, it's, I think it's more difficult um, when you're when you're just trying to get through school or 
uh, you know, the younger crowd. Uh, but even when, you know, you feel like you've accomplished all your goals and we've talked about that as well. And how do you, what turns into your, your mission and, and what you're doing? And, um, you know, we were, got into the notes, you know, two and a half years ago and, um, it's just, it's evolved. Um, I, the note business is, is not as big as I'd wanted it to be just cause, uh, some of the things that we've got going on, on the other sides, but, um, like you said, everything is pushing me right now to, uh, to do what I'm, what I'm really enjoying. And, uh, February is looking like the, the date that I'll be heading out of corporate. <laughs> oh, see, we're, we're, we're Facebook live right now. We use it on Facebook live it. And I was like, you know what? I hope you corporate bosses aren't watching this right now. <laughs> so. Hey, it's just a target. It's just a target. <laughs> I'm still crushing it up there. So that, yeah, they got nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. And, um, exact, exactly. But you know what? I like that you have a date on that because a yeah. lot of people I mentor, you know, I'll ask them, I'll sit with them and I'll, I'll ask them questions. And um, I was in North Carolina. I was with uh, Orrin, my, my, my partner out there, my project. Mm -hmm. and I, I almost hate saying that because like business, I like he's become one of my best friends. Like truly. I know it's, like it's the same. Like, and I'll, but, I'll share what, what I've got going on coming up in March. And yeah. he was like, yeah, you're not working for me. You're working with me. Right. And he's, right. he runs a company. I run a company. We're going to run them together and, and grow them together. So I don't like saying about. we're partners or we're, yeah, this is my employee or whatever, you know, right. we're just, we're all working towards a, a common goal. Well, and it's true. And, and I was with him and we talk and, and, and we met somebody that, you know, we're looking to really do a lot of business with. And mm -hmm. I sat with him and I was just, I was really asking him like, cause, cause you know, I, I don't know. I got into like my mentor mode with him and it's cause I just took a liking to the, to, to the guy we met um, out there and uh, Oren brought him into my life and um, you know, in my inner circle. And he, and he kind of sure. knows that I'm very particular who I bring in my inner circle. And it's, it's because to me, it's not about the business, it's not about money anymore. And yeah. I don't say that to impress you. And as one of my mentors, Mark said, a friend said, it's to impress upon you that, you know, money, you can make money. And I don't want to say it's so easy to make money because, you know, that sounds a little pompous, but it's right. money is money comes and goes, but people in your life don't come and go. And I was sitting with this gentleman and uh, he's a builder and we started talking and I asked him, you know, I'm not going to mention his name because you know, sure. he's, he's on here and, and, and is, who knows if his, his workers are on here, his boss is on here, so I don't want to do that. But um, he was just very unhappy in his situation, his work situation. And mm -hmm. very, very good person, ethical, moral, great all-around guy. And you could just see family man, um, loves his wife, loves his kids, and just wants, wants to be there for them, has, wants to have a work-life balance. Sure. And I started talking to him and we got into, you know, his vision. I went right into his vision and his why and his, why is he doing what he does? What does he really need? And most people don't understand that. So I think this is so important to really know what your goals are every year. And, you know, we've been at masterminds. You and I have been at masterminds. I remember we sat yeah. at one mastermind and we won't talk about the mastermind, but we sat <laughs> at one mastermind and I'm not going to talk about it because I actually don't, don't, um, don't want to have anything to do with the person. I, yeah, I'm this. I'm in the same boat, so I'm not saying anything either. <laughs> I don't want people to, to think that that's somebody I would I would back. Um, right. I went same there. Here. It was almost a favor back then because I knew he was bringing a lot of new people in the new business, and I and I got to speak to them. And he would ask me all the time to come down and be part of the mastermind. And I would go like once a year, and I enjoyed going because I got to meet you. Right. That, I was going to say that that was the best favor you ever did for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I still got my bottle of bourbon sitting there that you Good. me saw. I, I haven't cracked it yet, actually. But anyway, I got, I got, I got twenty more where that came from. <laughs> I need the I need the horse, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but anyway, what's so important is that every time I go to events and every time I meet with people, I ask them and I start asking them questions. If I really like them, if I don't really connect with them, I don't even get into it because it's. Yeah you know why um but i like them and i want to help them i start asking questions things like hey why are you doing what you're doing yeah and, and they give me these bullshit answers right you can quickly oh, identify uh, if, if yeah, it's a partner watch my mouth uh, the BA <laughs> says is i want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year i want to make two hundred thousand dollars a year and i ask them why and they have no freaking reason why right yeah they don't know what they need to make. They think that if I make this number, I'm going to be happy. Now I can tell you this. I can guarantee, I don't make a lot of guarantees. I'll guarantee you this. 
and you tell me you need to make a certain number and I can help you make that number, you will not be happy <laughs> because you have not figured out what your why is. You haven't figured out what your vision is. Yeah. You haven't figured out who you are as a person, what you want to be, who you want to be known as. And guys, I'm saying this, guys and gals, I'm saying this right now because you're in goal setting, you know, end of years. This right now is a big part. I mean, fourth quarter is huge for you. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. But you're in goal setting mode soon if you haven't been already or you will be. Mm -hmm. And start thinking about let's put the monetary stuff on the side right now because you could back into that. Who do you want to be? Who does Logan want to be as a person? Who does he want to be as a father? Who does he want to be as a husband? Who does he want to be as a friend? Who does he want to be as a partner? Yep. Who does he want to be as an investor? Who does he want to be as a co-host with me? Right? <laughs> no, no, really. I mean, like, no, absolutely. Little it's you gotta, it, you gotta think these little things. Me. You, it, they seem um, unimportant or immaterial, but they they all create this who this person is, and whatever. All of our goals are different. Um, all of our our whys are are different, but have one other than than a monetary value on it sure one of the goals is to make a certain amount of dollars but that's like the fifth or sixth goal it's not the first goal <laughs> yeah but, yeah, but you, you make a certain amount of dollars but why yeah because it allows me to do the other things that i really want to do um it, the, the cash is unfortunately uh or fortunately for depending on your situation is, is a necessary item um we can't give back to the community we can't give back to um, the schools, I, you know, I enjoy taking my daughter to school and, and trying to pick them up and going to events and uh, being involved. And, you know, if you've got a full time job like I'm currently doing, it's difficult to do that. So cash, sure, it allows me to step in, but it's not the primary like I need more. I need more. I need more. It's kind of like finding that happy medium of getting what I need to accomplish all the other things that I want to do. Right. And it's not even the, 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 the job and all that. It's just right now you've, you're taking on a lot. And I think we've even talked about that recently. You know, you're mm -hmm. taking on a lot of different things and all these different things are about money making, money making, money making ideas. But I understand why you're doing it right now is because yeah. you're trying to replace what you had so you can get the time you need. Exactly. Uh, most yeah. people think that that's what they're doing, but they're really not doing it. They're taking on, I saw a post of a friend of mine on Facebook today and he, he talked about, his daughter turned to certain, you know, 18 and she's, she's talking about going off to college. And he's like, he's grateful that he spent all these, these years with her doing all these different things. And he put in there, he goes, you know, you could always make money. You could always work harder and make money when you need to, but you'll never get those times back. And, right. you know, I have two adult kids and one, my youngest is almost an adult. Um, and I, I'm blessed that, you know, my wife really set me straight back about 11 years ago. And uh, kind of showed me the ways and, you know, and I, and, and I have the life, I, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm very blessed. Sure. I have what I need. Um, I stopped thinking that cars, boots and watches and those kind of things were really what we needed. And I'm lucky because I have a wife who's, who's kind of frugal. She, mm -hmm. I was the spender. She wasn't the spender. So I didn't have to stop her. She had to stop me. Same, same with us. <laughs> you know, that's good. I'll, I'll spend, I mean, and, and, but then I realized, you know, and I'm a, I'll just talk about, like I have it right here. You can see it says personal vision. Yeah. It says personal vision, guys. I have, and I, I don't lie, I have a business vision, right? I have two different visions every day, and I have them out in there. They're breathing, breathing, living objects. And I talk about in my personal vision, I talk about who is Dan Zatowski, right? So I have these in my computer. I look at these, I look at, I have um, bullet points mm -hmm. okay, on my wall right over there. I have bullet points that say who I am. You know, who's Dan Zatowski? I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a mentor. I'm mm -hmm. a friend. I'm an uncle. I'm a cousin, right? <laughs> I'm a nephew. So I talk a, a son. I talk about all these things. Nothing in there says I'm a millionaire. Yeah. Okay. Nothing in there says I want to be a millionaire. Now we we because I'll tell you this, we hit that status a long time ago. And once again, I'm saying this to impress you, not to impress upon you. We hit that status a long time ago and I wasn't happy. Yep. So all these people are telling me I want to make I want to be a millionaire. That's the exact message I gave this past weekend. So talk um, a little bit about that because I was freaking awesome. Bro. Yeah, so that was that was that fun. Was awesome. Um that was my first real experience with um sharing my story uh, to uh, a live group of of kids. I mean, these they're 18 to 23, and um it's just you know, I talked about, you know, I've been I've been in your shoes, and you know that. I partied and went to went to college and then uh, failed out in my 
uh, junior year, sophomore year, and then had to switch schools. And um, I've been in dating and falling out of love and all that stuff. And then at the end of the day, you know, my topic for, for the kids was uh, budgeting and uh, money and credit and, you know, how to leverage credit and different tips and stuff. And, um, and John, who's the, my partner down here, and he, he said, Logan, tell them, tell them about your financial stuff. And I'd refrained from talking about that. I just, it, it's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just not, I don't, numbers are, are, you know, help paint a picture about who you are from, from a business perspective, but it doesn't paint who I am. And he's like, well, just tell them because I want them to hear this. And I said, all right, well, I became a millionaire two weeks ago. Um, finally crossed that, that hurdle. I, me and my buddy were headed to the store and uh, he just happened to ask me, Hey, so how are you doing on your, on your goal? And I said, yeah, I hit it a couple of weeks ago. And we just kept, kept going. Like it, it wasn't like a, I mean, should I have been more excited? I don't know. Like it was just a, it was just the next milestone. It wasn't that important to me. I thought it was when I set that goal four years ago. Um, I thought it was going to be this, this amazing moment where we all go out and celebrate. And it was just like, eh. it, it'll, because now my, my bit, I think it's very difficult in the very beginning to not think about money, but that's all I thought about in the very beginning. That's all it was, was how do I get to 500,000? How do I get to 750? How do I get to a million? Okay. Now what? Well, 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 let me ask you this. Why, why was money so important to you back then? Like why, why did you think you had to get to 500,000 or a million back then? Because I thought I was going to be happy. <laughs> and then every goal, I, every time I hit it, it never happened. <laughs> I mean, yes, happened. yes. I was, I was happy in the moment. But I'm telling you, it or, didn't mean anything. I'm telling you, Logan, it, it's friends didn't call I, me. I can't tell I, you how, how true that is. I, I, you know, I have the, we're still in that prosperity in a circle. It's my, you know, group yep. 10, 10 max, 10 people. And I already started working one on one with people in the, in the, in the group because we're not getting together until our first retreat. Yeah. And um, man, I, I have the same first three months with everyone I mentor. Right. Mm -hmm. Not not like what I mentored you to, to raise private money. That was different. But I have this first three months I mentor somebody. It's all about it's all about who you are. Why it, we peel that onion back so we deep. Yeah. And um, it's powerful. It's powerful. And every single person, I'm gonna tell you this, every single person I work with are business owners, business leaders. Um, they play at a high level, a very mm -hmm. high level. Mm -hmm. um, and on the outside, everybody will look on them on social media, like, wow, I want to be just like that that person, the yeah. guy, girl, whoever. Um, but when we pull those layers back, I have not started working with somebody, not one in my whole life. And I've been mentoring for a decent amount of time now. I have not worked with anyone in my whole life that came to me and was truly happy. I have not found one yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, because before I work with them, I make sure they're going to play all out. I make mm -hmm. sure they're going to be honest. I make sure they're going to give 150%. Yeah. Because otherwise I can't help them. I'm not here for, for you to pound your chest. Um, I've worked with millionaires. I've worked with multi-millionaires. I've probably worked with somebody I know right now who owned a ton, a ton of land, mm -hmm. mobile home parks. He's probably a billionaire and I've worked with him. Um, <laughs> so it's not about the money. I mean, no, people make way more than me. Their net worth is way more than net worth is way less. Every single person, every single person has given up their why and their vision, right? To go chase that, Ch to go chase it. Exactly. And, 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 and when we met, I remember, I mean, oh, geez, I, I say, it's, I don't know if it's four or five years ago. It's, it feels like it was like this year. Um, <laughs> Cause we stayed so close, but when we met, I still remember like you were in like R over like, I don't know, some ridiculously low numbers where somebody was making like 250 or 300,000 a year. Yeah. And I was so, uh, I was weirded out because I think you asked me at one time, is it like, what's your portfolio look like? And I yeah. almost wanted to lie to you and decline what I was doing because I didn't want you to think that you Dude, couldn't I, get there, right? I do the same thing. I do the exact same thing. And that's, and that's why I bring these, talking to these kids because I didn't want to, I kind of wanted to shy away from the money aspect of it. I said, look guys, I'm here because this is a Sunday at seven o'clock. We're in a barn with a bunch of space heaters running because uh, we just want to share what we've learned. We've got three business owners in here and we're all sharing our different perspectives. And it, have you heard of us talk about how much we have in terms of dollars or items? No. It has nothing to do with that anymore. Um, and I'm just, I'm so glad that I've got over that 
that hurdle. It, it's it's a difficult one, I think, for a lot of a lot of people to to um, take on and, and say, what the hell is my why? <laughs> well, we got a couple of comments. We usually don't have it on Facebook Live, our podcast, but we do have a couple of comments. Sonia is on here and she says, they don't understand the work that goes into it. And it's yeah. true. Like People see, you know, people see the, the end product, right? They see that, you know. Thank, yes. You became I, a millionaire. And, I've had a couple of friends reach out like, man, wow. I mean, this last year you've really taken off. I was like, no, I've been working my ass off for six years. You just, you thought I was an overnight success. And, you know, whether that's me holding back and not expressing all the things that we're doing, you know, whatever it is, but every, I've got so many that look at us and just say, man, you guys are, I don't know what happened this year, but it, it's really, it's all come together. I was like, no, it's been coming together for years. It's just, you now you get to see the things that we are able to afford, the things that we're able to like, I'm, I'm not, at work every time so i get to go do things with the family or like i don't understand how you're able to do that now it just all took off i was like no it didn't <laughs> well for most people it doesn't see the difference between us is we don't do one deal and go on facebook and talk about we're a guru and experts right that's the that's a little bit of a difference um i oh, don't say guru the, i hate that the, word we're the quiet storm um we're the quiet storm and i'll and i also t believe me i tell you this i said you know people the stuff they put on social media, right? I said, the, the, some of the best people I know, you will never find them on social media. You'll never find them. Yeah. Like that, that billionaire that I was mentoring, mm -hmm. he's not on social media. I don't even think he has a Facebook page. Yeah, He doesn't have an Instagram page. He doesn't have, uh, you know, the, all these crazy TikTok, all the crap out there. And, you know, you have to do it um, because it's it's your way to get content out there. And that's why I like that. Yeah, that's content. why. Hopefully we, we're not charging people. And I always say that, listen, I, all I ask you to do on this group, and I always say in the beginning and the end, is share it out. Take our the reason it's on our page, share it out. Um, we are gonna the, the podcast is going to be live, hopefully within the next couple months. Called called Passive to Prosperous. Follows follows the book, right? Passive to Prosperous. I always have this on my desk, and it kind of reminds me of why I do what I do. Um, share our podcast out because you'll probably hear this on the podcast. Most people, um, we try not to put. We've already been offered. Uh, people to sponsor. I've already been hit up. People ask me to, if they could sponsor the page. I'm not saying I won't do it in the future, but right now I'm trying to keep it cleaner of ads. Um, we're not doing this for money. We're taking time out of our life to change your lives. You know, and maybe yeah. one thing we say can help you change your life. Um, this is not really a, too much of a podcast on how to do deals. It's more on we're keeping it on living in prosperity, living the life of prosperity, yep. living, living your why, living your vision, because that's what Logan is, is more recently doing. That's what I've done over the last at least 11 years. I mean, investing 30 years over the last 11 years, I think I've really started living my vision the right way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, I, I, but listen to what you just said, 30 years and only a, only a third of it is you've really been able to connect with your vision. And I'm thankful that I was able to start investing six years ago and I'm here at, you know, in, in the fifth year where I'm, I'm finally connecting. And I think that's a, that's a, that's something to take note of real quick because it's not overnight that you're just going to flip a switch. Some, some people it is. Um, but you know, this, that's what I think this podcast is, is to a lot of people is to show, you know, it may be difficult for somebody to relate to you because you've been doing it for 30 years. Maybe it's somebody, maybe it's easier to relate to me because I've only been doing it for four or five and um, you know, it's, it'll happen. Um, and hopefully we can help it help you get there faster. And I think a lot of it has to, and that's why this show is so important. A lot of it has to do with your goal setting. And mm -hmm. I know people talk about it. Hey, I'm going to gonna make New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to, you know, be better with my family. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to do 20 deals. They have no idea why they're going to do 20. Deals. I'm going to do 20 deals this year. Yeah. But let's start. Why? Why? How, if you get nothing else out of this whole show today, Make your New Year's resolution start this way, right? Start this way, right? Start with a personal vision, right? Start in your personal vision, like who you are, okay? Who's Dan Zatowski? He's a husband, father, uncle, friend. I went through that whole thing, right? Life and football coach, visionary in business, financial, real estate investor, educator, and positive role model. My vision is to be able to get out of the day to day to, day to admin test in my business, and okay? Um, so something I would say is like, I absolutely hate admin tasks. I want to spend my time doing what I want, what I'm great at and what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And not talking about what I hate at, 
Um, so you'll see, I write it down and then I go back in red and I change it, right? You see, I do this to my whole, and it's, it's like, this is not one page guys. <laughs> this is, and then I finalize it and I write my goals in my model notebook. So I'm not just talking this stuff on social media and telling you what you should do. Like other people, oh, set your goals. I actually do this. I spend time doing this. I actually do it. And then I sit with my wife and my family and I talk about it with them, but not one thing, my vision here, not one thing in my vision I'm looking at right now says, I want to be a millionaire. Not one thing. And I understand. Yes. Yes, we are. And, and I'm very careful saying that online. Um, but it's not, nothing here is about money. Even yeah. though I understand you need to make money. So we're, Let's just talk a little bit about you. What, what are your end of, what is your fourth quarter? Like if you want to share some of your fourth sure. quarter goals this year, and sure. then we'll start, you know, and then, you know, we'll start, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my fourth quarter goals, what I planned on doing and how like God smacked me right in my face with that, <laughs> with my plan. And it <laughs> happens. You plan, my grandfather used to say, you plan and God laughs and, and yeah. he sure does, but he's still, he's still great. And uh, right. he, he right. does for us. He gives us, where we should be and i believe in them and uh sorry That's, if you guys don't and i'm not going to make this a, a, a podcast about god but you know i'm never like oh why me right i never things don't happen to me right things yep. happen for me and i truly unless you believe that your life will never be as fulfilled as it could be absolutely yeah. absolutely man and like, i don't i've got to I always have a quick prayer uh for myself and i'm always hey thankful for where i've been thankful for where i'm today and um I have no idea where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> so, right. uh, but I, but I know there's a plan and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm doing things to move forward. Um, yeah. whether that's next week's goal, next year's goal, uh, fourth quarter goals, you know, whatever that is, I'm going to, I'm going to set goals and, um, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, and even, think- even home homes. Uh, thanks for being on here. Home. Uh, guys, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, no, this is not normally a, a Facebook live. We do, we do just record podcasts and launch them, but I want to start doing some Facebook lives. This one I want to do on Facebook live because I think it's so important right now. And by the time the podcast comes out, it might not, it might not be till next year. I'm um, after the new year. Yep. So uh, Hone had said goal setting is important because it may reveal that the plan you have won't get you where you're trying to end up. And, and Hone, I see you living life to the fullest right now, brother. I see you giving back to a ton of people love what you're doing and and all the person awesome. i see kind of, kind of new in the business over a few years but he's out there you know providing value to people and living living life to the fullest with his wife so uh um but yeah let's talk a little bit about you, you and and we have a lot of people on here Oren, my brother is on here and he he was with me and he had mentioned that i changed this gentleman's you know perspective which is it's awesome um not it's not about me patting myself on the back it's about be changing a life. Like that's, that's what I'd love to do. That's yep. why people like, Dan, you don't need to work. You don't need to mentor people. You don't need to do your inner circle you're doing. I'm basically charging very little for it, but I've turned down a lot of people to, to come into the group to, to them. I don't like to call things masterminds because I think the masterminds out there are junk. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, 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 it's got a, a negative problem. connotation with it nowadays. <laughs> you just pay to get in and that's your only barrier to entry there's no value. And I'll say this, the where I met you was a bunch of newbies and it was, yep. called, it was called a mastermind of sort. I'm not going to yeah. talk about How are we mastermind? And I was there for the mastermind. I was a considered newbie in that industry and to call it a mastermind, I didn't see a whole lot of seasoned investors other than yourself. Uh, the guy that put it on, who's, you know, moving on past that, but sure. um, it a mastermind, <laughs> These yeah, weren't business owners. These weren't master in the, in the room. And uh, if you're in the small, smallest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. But yep. there's nothing wrong with going to events and giving back once in a while, right? Because people want to come up to you. They want to ask you questions. Sure. But that's why I love about it. I don't like to go there and it's not about ego and saying I'm the smartest guy in the room. It's about giving back to, to the community, giving back to newer investors. But please don't call it masterminds. Just call it a group meet up or something <laughs> um and don't just charge people for a mastermind if you're not truly a master at, at this you know if you're if you haven't done a certain amount yourself don't call it a mastermind so yeah ours is called the prosperity in a circle because it really isn't in a circle last time i did this about four and a half years ago um we had 10 people in the group we actually did what i love why i got back to it is is um we actually did a 5.1 million dollar poll a fanny poll you know in the note business we mm-hmm. put it all together which was the best 
it wasn't like you gave me money. We all did it together. We all put it, we all were responsible for about a half a million dollars, either raise it ourselves, yep. if you want to be in. And we all worked together. One person did due diligence, one person did boarding, one person was working on legal, one person was working on workouts. It was, and, and I got away from it. Here, here's why I'm bringing it up, right? I'm bringing it up because my mindset got screwed. My vision got screwed, right? I didn't listen to my vision. Remember I said 11 years ago, I changed how I did everything. This was about four and a half years ago. And what happened is people started asking me in the group, hey, Dan, could, could you mentor me one-on-one? And my one-on-one mentorship is $26,000 for six months at the time. And I don't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. I only one-on-one coaching I do is raising private money. And it's only two people every three months. And I haven't done it throughout the whole, su- since uh, the summer, I stopped doing it. And I'll do it again in a new year, but only up to two people every three months. Because um, I love doing that kind of one-on-one. But I stopped doing it. But uh, I should go back. I started mentoring people and I would do eight people every six months. Okay. And I would keep the, some people would stay for a year. Right. And I had a waiting list. I had a yeah. waiting list and I wasn't charging the most. I should have charged a hundred grand for what I was doing for them because everyone I did one-on-one coaching with was successful. Every single yeah. person. Right. So $26,000 investment in yourself to have the knowledge after six months, it's no reason you shouldn't be successful. I mean, I can't hold your hand the whole way through. I actually went and did that, which now think about $26,000 times 16 people for the years for over $400,000. People thought I was absolutely nuts to give it up. But what happened is I actually, I did that because I was chasing the money, right? Totally against my vision, totally against my vision. That's why, that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. Right. So when I, I have a mentor too, right? If you have a mentor that doesn't have a mentor, probably with the wrong person. I have two mentors right now. So, and I pay over six figures a year for mentorship and events and stuff like that. But here's the thing. I learned that it wasn't that I disliked coaching. I was just coaching the wrong people. Sure. Think about that. Think about, think about this guys in your life. It wasn't that I disliked coaching. It was, I disliked the people I was coaching. Not I disliked them. I disliked their mindset, their vision. I was taking people in just because they could pay me the fee. Mm-hmm. And I who's, who's, who's also chasing the dollar. So then what it, what, it be, what it becomes is this chain of they chase, you chase. Right. And it, it started getting to the point, like when I mentored you on how to raise private money, right? And you were very successful. You've raised millions of dollars. I don't even know how many millions you've raised right now. It's, it's, right? it's done well. It's done well. Yeah, it's done well. <laughs> but, so, it's a, but, but it was a I mindset actually, shift. I actually look like when I saw on my calendar, like I was doing three people every three months at the time. And I saw that I was doing it. I knew you were in the group. Everybody in my raising private money group was excellent because they you know some people were less successful than others, but everyone had some level of success. Mm-hmm. If they stuck with it and kept doing it. Problem is most people, they give up really quick. Yeah. But what, what I loved about that, and then why, that's why I say I still do the raising private money training is because I actually look forward, I would look at my calendar, which week I'm doing those calls. And it was one day a week, I would meet with all three people. Mm-hmm. So it was an hour call. And I, and I loved, it was like my morning or my afternoon. And I actually enjoyed it. And I learned this from my mentor, right? Because I didn't see, I didn't see, what is it, the, the, the forest through the woods. I didn't see it, right? And I was just like, no, I'm done. I hate coaching. I'm not coaching. I hate mentoring. I don't have the patience for it. My stomach turns when I have to talk to people. He's like, what is it that you don't like? And everything showed me that it was the people I was mentoring. Yep. Now, there were some people I was mentoring I loved. So he says, why don't you just work with those people? And the light went off, right? Yep. So I wasn't. It wasn't about, I want to make more money. I should be charging $100,000 for six months, which I should definitely be charging that. Yeah. Because if you're getting in this business just to make $100,000, you're in the wrong business, right? If you're coming to this business and you're not, thinking you could be a millionaire and have the life you want. Is that not worth $26,000 investment in yourself? Mm-hmm. Um, so if somebody's not willing to invest in yourself, it's, you don't want, that's the first thing you don't want them to be with you. Right. Cause yep. they don't value themselves. How are you going to help them if they can't value themselves? Right. If they don't think they're worth that investment, why would you work with them? Okay. If they don't invest in themselves. Okay. And, and you work with them, you're failing them. Okay. If you work with them for free and they quit, well, those people could have been great to their families. They could have been a great husband, a great father, a great wife, a great aunt, a great friend, but they never got it because they are going to quit because it's not easy. Nothing's easy. So that's what's so important. So I realized myself and I'm just throwing a little bit, I'm I'm being, 
I'm being humble. I'm being honest here. And I'm being, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of putting myself on the line here for people right now. I, I was hating what I was doing and I had a, and I have, and, and somebody with me with 30 years experience just recently, this was in 2020, right? This was this year. Yep. I was miserable co- and I didn't want to coach anymore. And people started asking me, I was like, ah, oh, I just, I, I, I have no room. I was yeah, you just make up an excuse so you don't have to, yeah. It was just because I didn't, I didn't. So now what I learned is work with the people I want to work with. So on one, one side of the paper, I have my perfect avatar of who I want to mentor. My other side of the paper is my perfect avatar of who I don't want to mentor. Yeah. And if somebody meets that, I don't have that. Now, I'll tell you real quick. I had one guy. So when I first started doing our inner circle here and I had interviews, I had, I had uh, 17 people I interviewed. I only offered it to three people up front. And I'm only maxing out of 10. So even if it's one person in the beginning, I said, I don't care. I'll work with them. Sure. And then I'll, I'll add another one. I'll, and it, it'll, it blows up like that. Right. So it's not about the money. Yeah. Right. It's not about the money. The investment is very small to get in. Um, but it's the right people. The investment essentially covers doing our retreats and covers everything we do and a little bit of our time um, because we want to do three re- nice retreats a year. But it's, it's more about I want to work with certain people. And if I bring, someone like Logan in the group and he's and he, he's somebody who's like pounding his chest talking about how great he is he lies he doesn't play full out with the group he doesn't attend he doesn't give back because it's not on my shoulders I'm just a facilitator yeah well then why else would why would I want to go because he's not doing what he has to do sure so I'm just telling you that your vision right has to change it's a living moving object guys and in your eyes you got to start thinking a couple things and I'm going to go back to Logan, but I want to get this out there because it's so damn important. Who was in your network? All those people in your network only about money. Okay. Did they lie? Did they talk about how great of a life they have? Look deep, peel that onion back. A lot of people on social media talking about how great their life is. They don't have a wife or a husband. Not that they don't want to be married, but their, their wife or husband might have left them. Okay. Their kids, they don't have kids or the kids aren't around. Okay. They don't really have family around them. They're only around if you, if, if you talk about how much money you make or all the successful or showing all the toys you have. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's an easy one. Are they there for, for people that they can't make money off of? Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are in my life when they can make money off me. And when I make, make money off me, they can be involved in my deals to make money. Mm-hmm. But if they couldn't make money off me, they're not there. And I had this conversation with Oren. I'm like, dude, even if you and I never did a deal, we're just like, we're great friends. I mean, right. Logan, you and I, uh, I don't, we, you and I haven't done a deal, done a deal yet. Right? No. <laughs> okay. We have not done a deal yet. Yeah. 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 We yeah. Do, we'll be doing some stuff. Um, There's a goal. Do it, do a deal together. <laughs> well, we're going to do stuff. Not because we're going to make money. Yes. We're going to buy product. We are going to make money. Yeah. But you and I align like this. We align like that. Right. You and I have the same vision. Yep. You and I have the same ethics and morals. Um, I watch what you do. I watch how you are with your family. I watch how you are with your friends. I watch how you give back. And that's why you're a co-host with me on this show, right? Um, because there's a lot of people I can, I, I can have as a co-host on the show, but it's like, I don't align with you, dude. You, you're out there <laughs> posting all this stuff you have, you know, all this money you have. Yeah. But that behind the scenes, I know the real you, right? Mm-hmm. I know the real you. I know that you're not who you say you are. You... You're not the person you say you are. You're great when things are great, but when things, when the, the like if I'm in business with you and, the, and, and, and there's a bumpy road, you're going to yeah. be there. I right. know that for sure. When I'm in business with you with some people and there's a bumpy road right away, they stop freaking out, cursing you out. Yeah. They, jumping, they, jumping all of a sudden you're, you're not a good guy anymore. They talk behind your back. Um, I see that. I see yeah. it. I see it by people we all know together. I see it. I, I, and that's not the vision I want. That's not who I want in my life. So yeah, I can make millions of dollars with you, but if you're not the person I want in my life, it's not about money. And, I, and I'm driving this home so hard because everybody's goals, everybody has to do with finances, health, right? Mm-hmm. Those are the two, finances and health and things. Yeah. I never see people talking about, I never see people talking about you know, their why or their vision or what they want, who they are. You know, I I can say Tim Bratz puts, I love Tim. He's one of the really good guys out there in the multifamily world. And he talked, he he mentioned something about uh, Sir Richard Branson, you know, how he 
and I'll say this and then we'll, we'll jump back because I'm getting mm-hmm. off topic, but I think some of this stuff's important. You know, he had a call, he got called and they said there was a company and I, I might have it right. And you could check out Tim's, Tim's post yesterday. Um, I might have it right, but a company called up Sir Richard Branson and offered him a hundred thousand dollars to come speak at their event for 15 to 20 minutes, a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Now, he could have got in there, spoke, been home <clears> in an hour and a half on his private plane. And, and they call back and they basically, no, we're not interested. I'm like, you're not interested. So they, told, they, they call back, his, his crew, I mean, his staff called back. I mean, mm-hmm. they called his staff back and they said, when offer Sir Richard Branson $250,000 and pay for all his, his expenses on his private jet to come here yeah. and speak 15 to 20 minutes. So that guy could have made been home, got there, <laughs> was close to where he lives, spoke for about 15, 20 minutes and been home within an hour and a half and made a quarter million dollars. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. And I'm like, whoa, 200, quarter million dollars yeah. for 15 to 20 minutes of speaking. <laughs> okay. Then they call back. Oh, they they said, we're going to offer $1 million, $1 million pay for all his expenses on his private jet. So pay for the pilot, pay for the gas, pay for everything, the hangar, everything, <laughs> have him driven over here in a limo back. He'll be home in an hour and a half, a million dollars, speak for 15, 20 minutes. And he said, no, thank you. Damn. And, said, and it basically came down to, he'd, it, it, long story short, a million dollars meant nothing to him. Not because he's sure. Richard Branson, right? Not because he's Richard Branson, but because he didn't believe it wasn't his vision and go and speak for a million dollars for that organization for whatever reason it was. And I'm, I'm shortening the story up a lot, but think about that. Right now, if I offered you a million dollars to go, if I offered you a thousand dollars to go speak somewhere, Logan, would you speak? It depends on who the audience is. It depends on what we're doing. Like, what do, yeah, there, there would so be you, qualifying questions for it. Not just a thousand bucks, I'll be there. <laughs> so you're different than everybody else. Yeah. And I'd, I'll tell you what, and that's what I love about you. Because if I ask this question to almost anybody, if I give you a hundred grand to speak, would you speak? You'll find a reason. To oh yeah, exactly. We're, give me a place and time and I'll be there. Yeah. That's, and that's I usually think, the response. And I'm not sure if people will believe me right now, if when I say this, but I think I'd be the same way. If it was come speak for something you truly don't believe in for 15, 20 minutes and I'll pay you a million dollars, I'm going to tell you in my heart right now, I won't do it. Yeah. I and- won't put my name behind it. On that, on that yeah, point, like, I, I feel like I, I need to speak with some conviction. And if I don't believe in the group that I'm talking to, I don't believe in the message that I'm providing. What am I doing here? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and you have to, once you get that, that's when you find, <clears throat> I feel like I'm uh, a hottie Christian right now. Like, would you like to buy a flower <laughs> for the lady? <laughs> once you find that, you find, you find true <laughs> happiness. And I'm, guys, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this for some 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 woo stuff. You find true happiness in your life, and all the money in the world. Yeah, money is great. It's a it's an object to allow you to do amazing things for amazing people right. and amazing organizations. If that's what you so choose, okay. But all the money in the world means absolutely nothing if you don't have anyone to share that with. And I'm saying like, maybe you don't want to be married. Yeah, it, yeah. It doesn't have maybe to be a significant other. It can be a group of people. It can be. But when you're um, something overseas, whatever it is, like when you're like, when your spouse leaves you because of who you are, you obviously wanted to be married. You need to check yourself at the door at that point. Yeah. And say, well, I, listen, I've done it. I'm blessed. My my wife, we're still together, thank God. But and my kids are amazing. I have amazing kids. I mean, they come home all the time. I mean. My daughter is, is, she has her own house. She's been over here now because her, her she's working from home. She wants to hang out with us. Like yep. that means- yep. like, My wife and I had that same conversation the other day of like, I don't want them to look back and say, man, that was always working. Like exactly. working for what? Working for another dollar. Why? I'll tell you what, one of the things I do, and it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And if you're, if you're on here watching and you're one of my students, you know this. If you're in my inner circle group, you know this. One of the steps I make you take is I make you write your eulogy. And mm-hmm. I did it. And to this day, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I always tell people, and I'm not, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. In fact, I tried to have my wife do it and she won't do it. That's how hard it is. I was crying. It took me 
so long to do. It took me over a day to do because I couldn't finish it. I kept going back. And I was like, I have to have more stuff on it than this. And the problem was. You didn't. It really, I didn't. And it really it, hit yeah. home. So guys, if you're on here, write your, you're, there's if you're some not, deep right, thing right there. Would your yeah. wife get up and say about you? What would your kids say, up, say about you? What would your niece and nephews say about you? What would your parents say about you? What would your friends say about you? And if all you have in there is you're a great guy that likes to have fun and has a beautiful car, or beautiful watches, beautiful boats, beautiful this, beautiful that, like, if you're not there for people, like, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's actually giving me goosebumps right now. And I'm probably choking up a little bit, but if you don't, if you don't, if, if you don't do this, right. These are, and I, I'm saying this because it's the end of the year guys before, before you get back into writing your goals for 2021, let's go back on your life a little bit. Let's go back on this year. Um, mm-hmm. What have you done? What have you done different? I mean, Geez, Logan, you, I mean, I don't know if goal ha- was having another kid, but man, you, you're blessed. not, you not another- going into the year. No, but Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you, you had another baby girl and, and she's adorable. And, uh, I had a grandson and, and that wasn't, I mean, I can't, I can't do anything to make that. I don't yeah. think good, but- and, you, and you know, what's so funny just to hit on that real quick on. So we've got a four month old and, um, I was talking to my wife months four, four months, man. She's, Holy she's growing. I know. Um, I made a post about that the other day. I was like, four months old, you got to slow down. Um, but I think back to my oldest who's six and, um, when she was a baby, I I really wasn't there. Um, I I was focused on other things. Um, and now I'm just, I'm finding, I'm consciously thinking like lay on the ground and play with her. (laughs) Like, sure. She's not going to remember any of this. Um, but it, it's, it's just, I'm able to kind of slow things down now and um, not so, not so just chasing, you know, back to the same thing that we're talking about just chasing, chasing that dollar. And uh, it's allowed me to just enjoy uh, the time with, with a, my new baby. And um, just, it, it's unfortunate that I didn't get to do that same thing with, with my first, but um, now it's, just, you know, make a change and, and do it now. So. Bro, I, I, I love doing this a lot. Like, we do it on Zoom anyway ourselves, so we don't, you know, we still see each other. Yeah. I'm watching your face while you're saying that. Like, you had no, when you said you, you became a millionaire this year, you didn't even, you didn't even blink about it. It was like it's, nothing. You're talking yeah. about your, your, your baby. And <laughs> I, and right now, I, I, you probably are welling up in your eyes a little bit because your face is like, man, that was freaking awesome. Like, you're yeah. talking about your kids and like how most people would talk about being a millionaire. And most people talk about getting this nice car. Like, and when you said, when you said I became a millionaire this year, like, didn't you like just pat? It was like, yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to talk about it with this group, but you know, with the youth group on the weekend, like it just, it's not important. It's just allowed me to do other things mm-hmm. that I, that I really and, care about. And the money that the, the, the lifestyle you have is, is awesome. So what's, let's, let's go through like end of the year for you. Like this is fourth yeah. quarter. What is it? So Man, we, gotta, we get, we, th- that's why the show is called pass the pass to the prosperous. Cause to me, it should just be called prosperous. That's at the end exclamation point. Right. It's just- not, it's not always passive. You, you want it to be passive, but <laughs> right now it's pretty active, pros- active to prosperous. Um, so, but so- yeah, this, this quarter, man, it's been, it's been busy. Um, I think one of the episodes a couple back, we, you know, we talked about the self storage deal that fell apart for, on us. Um, and, taking that and thinking that was going to be my cash flow and that was going to, you know, kick me right out of corporate and move on. Um, I had to kind of pivot and um, still, you know, driving hard on the note business uh, marketing and talking to banks and all that stuff every, every month. But um, I stumbled across the, the stuff that we have going on in Broken Bow. And um, I had an experience where I was, you know, networking with, with key people and uh, just had this vision to, to bring everybody together and provide the same service that I received and share that with everybody else that I, you know, that is interested in doing that. So um, my goals have been um, put together a, a new Facebook group um, out there to, to help people to share information. Uh, that's literally what we have in the description is mm-hmm. we're, we own a cabin, we're investors ourselves, we've been in our real estate, but we're, that's just, that's kind of the backstory to say, and I tell you all that to say that we're going to give away everything that I've learned 
Um, I've paid. Can, I, can I jump in there a second? Yeah. Well, what, guys, just so you know, it, it, in my group, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole. We're not gonna do it here. Obviously, this is not what the show is about. But we're gonna do a whole breakdown of what what Logan's talking about for free in my group. So um, I'll post it here. And if you're in my group, become a real estate investor with Dan Zatowski. We'll do a show. We'll set up a show there. And I've I, that was part of our conversation. And believe me, I riddled Logan <laughs> hard on the you road. Did. You I did. Not, and, but I that's why hard. that's why I called you. <laughs> I hit him hard. Like I thought he was going to hang up on me at a certain point because I was beating him up about it. And I do that for a reason um, because I want to, you know, he's somebody a mentor. I want to protect him. I want to make sure he's 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 doing things for him, himself and his family, not for any kind of money. Yeah. And you hear what he said about uh, I just want to give the information back. There's no scarcity in how he yeah. talks. There's so many other people on on social media that talk and they tell you, "Hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing that." And it's like, you ask a question, it's like, well, if you pay me, I'll tell you. No, no, that, there, there is time to make, yeah. to make money on mentorship. But Logan gives stuff back. And the reason he is where he is, the reason he became a millionaire this year is because he's content. And part of our mentorship was when we talked, we talked about give content. How do you raise money? Give content. Be that was the, the, show you that was the, the biggest aha uh-huh moment, expert. man. That was it. And he is, <laughs> and, and you, you went through the Raising Private Money course like I did. a year and a half. Uh, year. Year about a year ago. and a half, about a year ago. Maybe a year ago. Yeah, and last he August. Became a millionaire. He became a millionaire this year. Yeah. Okay. And and everything he does, if you follow him, everything he does is content, content, content. Now he's given a ton of content about tax. He's not an accountant, but he's going no. through this and sharing what he's doing. How I did it is I go through and I share what I'm doing. I share the people in my network. I don't call me up and say, who's lending you money? Like I'm not talking about banks, my private lenders. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, hey, if you need a contractor, hey, if you need to know I'm buying, and, and Logan put it out there, right? I was like, hmm, I'm looking into uh, short-term rentals. And mm-hmm. Logan has gone through, done all the research, and he's just sharing what he's doing. And he put a group yeah. together about it. And I want him, you know, because he's the type of person he is, I'm going to open it up in my group. Now, I'm not going to tell you to invest or not invest in, in these. And, and, Logan and that's not, not what it's about. He's not, not building needs himself. He's not the realtor himself. He's not the property manager himself. No. But he's sharing what helped him and his family. Yeah. And that's sharing, that's living not in non-scarcity. And most people will not live in that kind of mindset. And that's when I talk about mindset, right? I talk about limited beliefs, right? You don't believe in yourself. You have limited limiting beliefs that you can't be successful. You live in scarcity where you think that there's competition out there. So you can't share with people. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to talk about it here, but when we do the group event, we're going to talk about the scarcity mindset some people in that community are, are living in. And Logan's gone through some some headaches out there. And I don't yeah. want that's not what this is about this, this call. So, but we will share that in the in the group. And uh, once again, if you're not in the group, jump in the group. I'm sure a lot of people here are already in our group. It's the free group. Become a real estate investor with Dan Zatowski. And uh, and in that group, we'll show everything Logan's doing, and then Logan will share his group with you guys. And if, if he, if you apply and he let, he, it's not a paid group, he'll let you in his group as well. Um, but he's going to open up the books and show you everything. So you can make, you can just have knowledge, right? Knowledge is power. You don't have to invest, but just having the knowledge. That's, that's the only thing is I want to put it all out there and then let you make the decision right. that's best for you and your family. It, it's so many other people are putting information out there. Just they're putting what you should see. So you should invest so they can make money. That's a yeah. little different. And that doesn't go very far because what happens is you jump onto the next thing next week, next month. So, so a little bit more about any other things you've been doing for fourth quarter. Um, you know, continuing the same, same marketing efforts with, um, with the note business, uh, it's a little slow right now, but, um, I think that's just kind of given where we are with a lot of the moratoriums and things like that. So we'll, we'll keep pounding that. Um, that's just another, um, stream for us and, um, I'm passionate about it. So I enjoy being able to, to help out a borrower. We've got a performing note right now that, um, the borrower lost the home to a divorce, been fighting over it for years. Uh, they were finally <clears throat> were able to mod it and get them back in. And, you know, I get a call probably once every two months saying, thank you. Like, <laughs> well, what's, I, is it, what, what, isn't that one of your core? I mean, I know we spoke about this because of mentorship, but it, what is one of your core values that you just reached with that? Yeah. So the, 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 the core value in the note business for us is being able to provide assistance to a homeowner that has experienced financial difficulty and having options. And they've, most of these people, it's their last leg. Um, they've 
the loans probably changed hands multiple times. They've been through multiple debt collectors. Um, and when they get a call from, you know, I don't personally call them, but when they get a call from, from my group, um, it's not about where's my money, where's my money. It's what do you need to keep the home? And you make a profit doing so, correct? Sure. Absolutely. That's why I'm in the business. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the first option is what can we do to help you? If it's nothing, then, you know, and you want to walk away, then how do we help you walk away? If it's, I want to stay in the home and I want to get caught up or, you know, what can you do for me? And then we throw, throw some stuff on, on the, on a page, talk about it with a borrower and, and say, okay, great. Then we've got it. We've got a plan. Um, and it doesn't always work out. So it just, it is what it is, but that's our, that's our first goal is to how, how can we help you? That's awesome. How can we help you? So, you know, part of, part of your mission statement is helping homeowners stay in houses, their homes while making a profit doing so. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's nothing wrong. And, and I bring that up because there's nothing wrong, my friends, with making a profit. There's nothing wrong with it, but are you making a profit um, screwing people over? Are yeah. you making a profit on the backs of people who shouldn't? I mean, are you selling life insurance to somebody who can't even afford to pay for food right now? Yeah. Is that what you don't? Like, what is your mission statement? And and once again, something that I hold near and dear to my heart. I have my mission statement right behind me, right? And on my wall, right? Right here, I was going to pull it out and show it to you. I have my mission statement laminated, all right? It's basically bullet points, eight bullet points, okay? It talks about I play full out. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to yep. be the best I can be. Um, it, it, it plays full out, right? <clears throat> and I go through my mission statement in my groups and stuff like that. But you should have a mission statement if you have a company. Um, because I don't just do it real. In fact, I like working with business owners non-real estate investors too. I like those people in my inner circle mm -hmm. because they bring a different facet to the group. They talk about, you know, we, we help them with people, processes, and systems, culture in their organizations. That's nothing to do with real estate. That's so important. Um, that is so important that you have to, when I, when I work with business owners, right. And I, I seem to work with some dentists out there consulting them. I've worked with contractors. <clears throat> I worked with a tile company, a big tile company. And when you work with them, the biggest thing we always talk about is the first layer is the, is the culture. What kind of culture do you have? Okay. And if you, you if you're not following Jay Durant, he's all about culture, right? So he's, he's, he's spot on. That's all he's about is culture. Um, so if you don't have a culture, nothing else matters. It's like your foundation. Then the three pillars I talk about is your people. Your, I'll go this way. Your people, your processes, and your systems. Okay. If you don't have the right people, processes, and systems in any business, it's it's like a three-legged table. It's going to fall down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the important things we talk about. And um, and and, and uh, your mission statement in a company really kind of falls into usually the culture, right? If if everyone doesn't buy in, it's not going to work. So in fourth quarter, some 100%. of the things, that, you know, so it's it's important because fourth quarter is really important, right? You have to adjust. See, for me, fourth quarter is usually okay. Usually things I want to fix for the next year, mm -hmm. right? but, you know, a lot of times it's, Hey, I have these, these problems, maybe these problems going on right now. I want to fix them, get them better for next year. I always that's want to a good look at idea. What, what, is that 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 what is that lag? That's maybe, maybe, maybe the wrong person, maybe yeah. the wrong process, maybe the wrong system I want to fix. And it always, for me, the biggest part of my fourth quarter is always taxes, right? I try to plan all year long. Mm -hmm. the tax planning in fourth quarter right what happened to me and i just say you plan and god laughs is uh i'm a big note holder obviously i'm in no, note space and, and rental space you know single family rentals most i don't even have any multis right now so it's just single family rentals and yep. a pretty large portfolio and um usually people hum along all the time with that with the notes right they pay they pay they pay pay every once in a while one gets paid off generally i don't have any that don't pay because i originate them they're seller financing to investors. I have skin in the game. They have equity. Mm -hmm. They're performing. If they don't perform, they get fixed. And then they start performing. Like for them, they're not going to give up a property for a four or $500 payment yeah. when they have $20,000, $30,000 in a deal. But I had one investor that we've worked with for a while. And he had, he bought at one time, he did 1031 exchange. He bought 14 properties from us, 14. <laughs> and uh, he was paying along, paying along, paying along. And with the rates so low, he turned around and he says, yeah, we're going to refi out. I'm like, okay, no problem. I thought he was going to refi out one at a time. Man, 
last month, I got a payment for over 400 grand. That is capital gains on me. And I did not expect it. Yeah. And I, I was planning long, planning long, planning long. I did not expect it. Now, most people would love it to get a check for over $460,000 at one time. There's consequences with that. And I'm always telling you this, right? Because, <laughs> man, I got slammed when I talked to my accountants. I always have, you know, I always have like two meetings a year with my accountant before taxes are actually due. And yep. it's planning. What does the year look like? What do we got going on? Is there any changes? Are we hovering around the same? I'm, I'm hovering around the same when I say, you know, net, your net, net. Because yep. like, if we don't flip stuff, it's cool. If we have rentals to sell finance notes, it's cool. Our taxes kind of hover along. Yeah. We have our solo 401ks. We we are have our, you know, my daughter's on payroll. She works for us. She does work. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we have our health savings account. We, we are on pay. My wife and I are on payroll. We're, we're really the only, you know, people on payroll for our company. Yeah. So we're doing it. We have our company vehicles. Um, we have a business percentage and a personal percentage. So we're doing everything you could possibly do, but you don't expect that four hundred sixty thousand dollars hit. When I talk about hit, it's, a, it's it's money in our account. It's net to us. So you know, so you people out there that are putting these fake checks out there, this is a hit, right? So now it's like, what in the world do we do? It's it's literally came in the end of November. Didn't expect it. Yeah. He talked about he's gonna be refined. I thought it's like one at a time, no big deal. Man, boom, my my servicing account hit me with this payoff. And I was like, what in the world do I do? I hit my account. And he's like, man, you, you, you're going to pay some taxes on this. Yeah. Like, this is, so now I, I've actually scrambled and not only scrambled because I don't want to invest in the wrong thing. <coughs> Sorry. Just talking too much. I, I had to, had to find a good investment, which I believe I found. Yeah. Which now I have to do accelerated depreciation on it. Okay. Or you have to look at cost seg project projects. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't in my plan for fourth quarter. <laughs> That was not my plan. I'm not, I'm not complaining, right? I'm not, but it's like when you plan God laughs, you have to be ready for that. So it seems like taxes are always in my fourth quarter. If you look at my, my driveway, it's not on buying vehicles because I, I talk about how I don't spend my money much on cars, boats, or watches anymore. I still have them. You do the save on taxes. But <laughs> my, my driveway, my garage looks like a freaking new car dealership because every year it's like, boom, a new car again, do a new truck again. Yeah, because you need the depreciation. It's got to be over 6,000 pounds. <laughs> it's got, you know, it's got to be a company vehicle. And then, so, but those are the kind of plannings, planning we do, right? Who yeah. can we pay in advance, right? We have a funnel system. We pay them a year in advance. Who can we pay off this year? Who can we hold till next year? Like, yeah, it's, all, year? it's all strategic. Yeah. So that's my fourth quarter planning, guys. I just wanted to give you a little bit. I didn't want to just talk about, hey, planning. I want to talk about, you know, fourth quarter planning, what we do. And then and then goals for next year. It's, you know, for us, it's, it's. I'll, I'll go mine and then real quick in the Logan's. I know we're going late, but this is such an important show that I hope you guys listen to the end or, or, or start it and, and save the video and, and listen again. <clears throat> but for, for next year, one, for once again, for me, I have – my vision sitting out here, my business and my personal vision, both of them. I go through them and I start making changes. And I go on my computer, it's a Word document, so I constantly update it, make changes. Things change, it's a living, breathing item. And I focus on my vision, what do I wanna do next year? How do I wanna make a difference in this? How do I wanna leave a legacy? And don't just say that, like that's BS. People are, I wanna leave a legacy. And I call bullshit on, I always do. And the mouth is usually, I did it the other day in North Carolina with the belt, I'm like, don't bullshit at me, dude. Tell me yeah. the truth. And he was like, take him back. <clears throat> because what he was saying was just surface bullshit. It really was. It was oh, yeah. Yeah. surface bullshit. And get get below the surface and really be honest with yourself. And what is your like? What do you want? If you tell me you want to leave a legacy, what does that mean? And geez, I, I, I'm on a soul search for what does a legacy mean? Yeah. Like, that's huge. This is out here. What does that legacy mean? Right. Um, I like. You know, some of the things I, I wanted to do a mission trip to Haiti in mm-hmm. March. I'm actually not going to do it because I, I just, because of what's going on in travel. Sure, I'm sure. Probably not going to do it. I just don't want to, you know, go through that right now, but <clears throat> because I just don't want to put other people at risk, right? Whatever I believe, I'm not going to get into politics, what I believe or what other people believe, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to go and do it right now. I'm still going to do financial. I'm still going to be part of that, but I actually got to the point where I was getting sick of the financial part of it. I wanted to actually see, selfishly, I wanted to go there. I wanted to see people's faces. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to help, you know, build something. You know, I, I can't build. I wanted to build something. I wanted to 
play with the, you know, the families out there. I want to make a light difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and we could all do that. And why don't we do it? Like, are you really looking to, to like, is giving 50 bucks to some organization changing your life? It could be. And I'm not going to say what works for you or it works for me, but that's really like, there are certain things for me in my, in, in 2021 that <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that I'm looking to make a difference in, right? So it's the, my legacy, right? And yeah. I'm not going to go through all my goals to you right now because I'm not even, I don't even do goal setting really until the week of December, like December 26th to January 2nd. And I'm hoping to drive out to maybe Florida this year, sit on a beach with my family and relax, get in the warm weather. Uh, if everything's quarantined, I'd rather be quarantined on the beach, you know, yeah. in warm weather. But, and that's really where I sit and I really, um, I, I really sit and I think I really take time for myself. I sit and I think, and I really come up with my goals for 2021. I mean, what do you generally, uh, how do you generally do this? Do you have any goals in mind yet that you started thinking about? Yeah. I mean, for, for me, um, I think goal setting became a priority probably about two years ago. Um, and it became a trend it, at that time. It was transactional. It was, I'm going to do X amount of deals, but again, why am I doing X amount of deals? Um, so now it's kind of shifted into how do I want to, my goals are more around how do I, how, and who do I want to spend my time with? Um, and at this point, you know, I, I have full confidence that the money will follow. So that's kind of my mindset when I, when I talk about sharing. Um, so really one of my goals is to, to it's, it seems silly, but um, in the, in the new Facebook group, I want to make a post every day about something relevant, something new, something that people can take. Maybe there may be only one person in the entire group that got something out of the post, but Why do you do that? what's that? Why? No, oh, I just mean how much content we I want to put out. It may not always be relevant to the, to everybody in the group. No, but why do you want to why do you want to put out content every day? Oh, because so I just want to give back everything that I've learned over these last two or three years. Um, I paid a lot of money to learn this stuff, and I know that some people, a lot of people, don't have the means to um, to do that. So I, I want to give back what I've learned because I think it'll help accelerate other people and their growth and whatever path that they're trying to uh, go down. I can give back free information um, or point them to the, to the expert in the field uh, to get them in whatever, you know, goal that they're trying to reach. And um, whether that's helping somebody on their credit um, I'm not saying I'm a credit repair expert, but there's some things that I've learned in credit optimization that there's, you know, quick one, two, three things that people aren't taught. And if you, if you get those, maybe that takes you to the next step and that leads you down some other path. I don't know. Um, with the, uh, so that, that's, that's one of the big ones with the group. Um, and then for, you know, I've got a big goal, um, here in Q1 coming up where, you know, transitioning into, um, you know, full time for, for myself and, um, helping another individual grow his business. Uh, so, you know, like I said earlier, you know, we're not growing or I'm not uh, his employee. He, I'm working with him, not working for him. And, uh, we, same type of vision alignment stuff. We were sitting up in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, um, having a beer and eating some pizza. And same question: What's your? Why are you doing all this? Because he wanted to make sure that I was the I was the guy that he wanted to partner with. And um, so it's, you know, how do we? We've had multiple calls. We've done kind of personality indexes, indexes, and um, just trying to identify that you know we're going to be the right partnership we've known each other for years. So it's, it, you know, we have a really good candid relationship, but um, business is a little bit different. So we want to make sure that we're the right fit for each other. And uh, we, we strongly believe that we are. So that's, that'll be a new venture for me um, as I kind of, we're, we're calling it a business development role. Um, but it's, it's more about sharing his vision that, you know, he believes that they're, they're the number one property manager, investor friendly um, here in the DFW market. And if that's, if you believe that, I believe that. And so let's go out and, and make it happen. Um, so that's, a, that's a, another thing that we've got going on for next year. Um, I mean, for me, uh, I, I, like I said, I moved away from this transactional goal setting and into these higher level goals. And then it takes me a bit to figure out what steps we need to do to get there. And so I, I'm more of a vision way out in the clouds and then I slowly walk it back to say, okay, what can I do today to get one step closer to that, to that goal? 
Well, that's cool and, you said uh, that. That's cool you said that. I just want to jump in there before we, we, we get off. I don't want to just end this podcast because we're ending here in a minute. But how you said you're you're on your, your vision. You're a visionary up here, right? Mm-hmm. And then you figure out the engineering, how to do it. And that's about the whole Imagineering movie with Disney. And everybody should be watching that. And, and the biggest thing is, and I'll go through this, is that you have to figure out what you are. Are you an Imagineer? Mm-hmm. Right? Are you a visionary, I should say? Are you an engineer or you're an implementer? Yeah. Like, I'm a visionary, right? So my problem is I used to always say, well, I'm going to, this is my vision. I can't do it because of these reasons, right? I would always throw that in there, right? <clears throat> but it makes now it easy go, when you don't hit the goal to say, yeah, I knew I wasn't going to hit it anyways. But now you just <laughs> go in there and you say, this is my vision, right? I want to, I want to help. I want to partner with a, with a property management company, right? And make it the best, or it is the best company. I'm going to blow it up, whatever. Yeah. And I'm not going to worry about, well, he doesn't have internet. He doesn't have an office for us. Yeah. We don't have staff in place. And that's what we all do. We sabotage our own ourselves, right? They come up with, this is what I want, right? This is my vision, but I'm not allowed to do it. And if you watch, if you watch the story, Disney would actually say if a visionary and the engineer that work talk to each other, they were fired. Yeah. They were fired. Why? It's because a visionary will have the vision that they can do this, this, and this. And the engineer will tell them all the reasons why you can't. And I'm sorry if you guys are engineers on this call, but you guys are the hardest to work with because you'll come up with every reason why <laughs> you can't. Right. And it's just like negativity, right? In this business, how many people want to have what you have? And I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about the life you have, but they won't do what it takes to get what you have, right? Yeah. They won't take six years of their life and stay focused. Even though you have a full-time job, you have three young kids, you have a wife, they won't do that. They won't do what I've done in my life to get there. Yeah. If we have it, if we talk about it in a circle, they want to know everything you do in your business and but they won't invest in themselves or they want to learn how to raise private money. They won't invest in, in mentorship. They'll ask you a million questions, but if you think I can answer a question for you in 30 seconds and you're going to be able to raise millions of dollars, like Logan has learned how to raise from working with us, it, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. No. Or if you don't stay laser focused and you give up right away, your business is going to give up right away. And that's, that's so cool. You said that about the visionary, right? Yeah. You didn't even talk about, you didn't even mention, like, I don't even worry. We haven't even thought about, like, what systems are in play. Like, who gives a crap? Yeah. What systems yeah. are in place? Who gives yeah. a crap? I don't need to know why I can't do them. Who, but, and, and then you, you at that we'll, point, we'll you figure hire, it out. Yeah. You hire those people in their genius zones. Who's best? At, who's your best implementer? Yeah. Right. And you talked about taking your personality test, or your disc test, or your, or, yeah. or, or your, yeah, any it, the test out there, right? Right. I oh, yeah. It, you can get out there and, yeah, there's people I believe that are good, but you get in there and you realize, okay, I'm, I'm a visionary. I need an implementer in there. Right. Yep. Um, I need a, an engineer in there. Right. Yeah. You don't I've, worry about that. I've, it you basically just, came out that I'm a strong delegator. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, that's, and I, that's most visionaries. That's your, your visionaries are your CEOs of companies. Okay. Yeah. Your CEO, COOs are your implementers. That's generally how it should be. Yeah. Okay, so you're a good CEO. I mean, I remember, I remember one company I was mentoring, uh, I was consulting with. He says, "Well, you know, I was sitting with the CEO, and he says, well, who, who should be, who, who should we hire?'" And I said, "I'm not looking for a job right now, but essentially, you should hire somebody just like me. You, you are a COO. You're not a CEO. Yeah, you're out there. <laughs> you're in charge of programming. You're actually writing code. You're not a CEO of a company. Yeah, you're, you're the COO or you're the CTO." But you need somebody who's a visionary, right? And then you need somebody who will implement. So that's that's great goal setting. Um, I love it. this show has gone way longer, way longer than normal. I knew, I knew it would though, because this I know, is a good that's topic. Why I put it on here, um, guys. Uh, once again, um, <clears throat> Logan. I think we're gonna we'll, we'll wind up wrapping it up. But is there anything else? Final words you have for people? No, man, I, th- I think, you know, like, like you said, talk, talk with your significant others, talk with friends that support you and um, see if you can pull something out of them from, from a goal setting visionary piece. If you're not the visionary, um, have a, have a true, honest conversation with some others. And, and like you say, get below that surface level. I want to leave a legacy. Sure. We all want to leave a legacy in some way, but what does that mean? What, what are you doing today to, to make that happen? And it starts with goals and it starts, it starts with a vision, starts with some goals, starts with some actions and, and then, and then getting after it. Um, 
it's, it's a journey. And that's, that's one of the biggest things that uh, my mentor and, you know, business partner down here, the property management uh, uh, owner is what's fun about all this is the, um, is the journey. It's, we look back and we, and we talk about all the things that, you know, went wrong or, or were positive or we made money or we lost money and it's built us up to where we are today. So don't ever lose sight of, of, of what, where you've been and what you've been doing, but you know, don't also just sit back and think things are going to fall in your lap. Exactly. Exactly. And you said something about the legacy when you talk, don't just write, I'm going to build a legacy. Like that's, that's horse crap. All right. Start peeling that on your back. What is the legacy? Yeah. You know, dig down why. Why do you want to build a legacy? Like, I want to know from you why you want to build a legacy. Like, why you? Don't just say, because I want to leave something. Like, that's all crap. Like, you have to take this serious, guys. Everyone talks about goal setting um, <clears throat> as such a, as, as like a, a, an action that they don't take serious. It's just like, oh, I have to goal set at the end of the year. I have to set my resolutions. No, that's crap. If you want to lose weight, lose weight. When you want to lose weight, don't do it because it's a new year. Like, why do you want to lose weight? Is it because you want to be healthy? Yeah. Is it because you want to be there for your kids, your grandkids? Is it because you want to be able to run? I mean, why? Like, don't, because unless you do that, you'll never fulfill your goals. You'll never have a journey. You'll never have a street map to, to, to get to those goals. If you move to a new area and you want to go to a park and you don't know how to get there, you put in your navigation and it kind of tells you how to get there. Do the mm -hmm. same thing with your life, right? So with that, guys, I, I think this was an amazing show. Geez, we could talk for another two hours just on this. <laughs> and from this show, we have so many different topics we're going to be talking about. Once again, please share please share this podcast. If you're listening on podcast, uh, by the time you're listening, it'll be out. We love a five-star review if you love what you got. Um, share it with your friends. Share with at least five friends if we've made a difference in your life. Um, give us that review. If it's not a five-star, we'd love to know why. We'd love to know we could do better. And uh, – once again, yep. if you're not in the group, jump in the group on Facebook, become a real estate investor with Dan Zatowski. We'll be doing a show in there, an educational show with Logan about his, uh, his, I'm, I'm not going to put it in here because I want you, I want you to get it. If, you, if you're in that group, it's a free group, you don't have to pay. Logan's going to yep. give away the farm in there. He's going to open up the books and show you everything he's doing with his, with his journey. And uh, we'll go from there. And once again, pass it to Prosperous. Thanks so much for being on here. I wish you guys all the best. If I don't, if I don't get to speak to you or see you or whatever, have a happy, uh, Merry Christmas. Hope, hope to those who celebrate Hanukkah had a happy Hanukkah, festive Kwanzaa. If I'm missing any others, I'm sorry. And a happy, <laughs> healthy new year to you and your family. Be safe. And hopefully we see you soon at a live event. Take care. All right, guys. See ya.